Hello, stream. How's it going, everyone? This is the first of the WoW podcasts. I know. Pretty cool, am I right? Right, I'm going to turn this down because this is like pretty loud. So, I'm here with my good friend Scott. Hello. And we're going to be talking about Draenor and the Magar because they're cool. So, Scott, what, what, what do you think of Warlords of Draenor? Like, lore wise. What are your opinions on the expansion? Uh, when it came to the stories they told through the leveling process, that was really good. That I really enjoyed that. Yeah. The speech sounded good. The unfortunate thing where they decided to cut like a whole patch, there was so much lore that was missed. Is yeah. my issue with it. Hmm. Like there was the whole thing to do with Shatrath, wasn't there? That was. Was from what I assumed that was going to be where Yirul was meant to get her power spike. Yeah. But that was just completely cut. Hmm. Yeah. And instead, like, randomly she became the big. And she went from a peon knight, basically, to yeah. the most powerful Draenei that we work with in that expansion. Yeah, yeah. It was pretty strange. I mean, I guess you could see it that. She was gifted the power of a prophet um, in the Shadow Moon storyline, and then also given a pretty cool weapon um, at the end of Talador. But how she like randomly went from f going over to Lunafall, the Alliance garrison, and just getting all this Exarch gear and looking all cool and becoming Velen's new right hand. No idea. Well, she didn't become Velen's right hand, did she? Because um, Velen was already dead by that point. Mm, no. Because he had sacrificed himself. Um, no, yeah, but before he sacrificed himself, he transferred his power over to Yorel. In... Oh, that's, a, that's the way you just said becoming Velen's right hand. That makes it sound like he's like her his right hand man's like, um, he's dead, how can he have a right hand man? Mm. No, no, I was, I was more thinking about how the, the fact that, um, of course, he transferred power just before purifying the corrupted Naru. Okay, yeah, yeah, But, yeah. You know, on, on the topic of the storylines told through leveling, what, what zone's your favourite? Because of Ooh. the stories. Um... God, it's been so long since I've done it, I'm going to have to replay him. Um, off the top of my head that I remember, it's probably actually the Fro um, Frostwolf one for the Horde, anyway. Ah, oh, Frostfire Ridge. Frostfire, if Frostwolf, Frostfire, yeah. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, it is the Frostwolves that you do work with there. Yeah. Yeah, I, I quite like that one, too. When you just... Uh... Join up, and you have the story of how Ganar's got his vengeance, trying to get, well, kill the sons of the Iron Wolf and get his own back for the death of his father. I thought that was pretty cool. I say, especially when it turns out that, the, okay, this third son that turns out to be the Iron Wolf is, um, but as far as I know in the lore, he's never mentioned before that still that quest line. Like he's not mentioned in any books mm. or anything like that. They've almost brought him in for that, yeah. I think. But yeah, it turned out to be their brother, Fenris. Which, yeah, yeah. That caught me off guard. Mm. And I, I, I don't think he was the third son. I think because I'm. He was the oldest, wasn't he? No, I, th I think. Uh, so we'd already killed the sons bef like before we faced the Iron Wolf. So like Fenris was the father for three sons. Cause uh, you, you know that little bit where Ganar challenges Duratan to mark Garar in the garrison, and then yeah, yeah. By that point, if you see the spike, he's got the skulls of all three sons. Yeah, fair point. He drags it in, doesn't he? Yeah, and then. Yeah, that, that's when he makes his challenge. But yeah. And then we get a massive speech and you have to hug Thrall, stop him from crying. <laughs> yeah, just you know, get, get him a little tissue. 
Hmm. Get one of the peons to run back to the big hold. <laughs> but yeah. And have, have you done the side quest line with, um, is it Cordana Felsong and Khadgar up in the north? With, where you uncover Gul'dan's plan with a Shadow Council? Yes. Yeah. As in, when I first played through it, and it will be the same when Shadowlands Origin has been for everyone, I play through every single quest storyline that I find to the end, even if I hit max level. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've um, quite cool how there was another storyline within Frostfire Ridge, you know? So it was, I say hidden, it wasn't, but, mm. but it was a complete branch off and your introduction to where that was going to go with the whole cooldown storyline for the yeah. expansion. Mm. And then, like, le le later on, if you quest through Nagrand's when when you follow the story of Cho Gal, it's pretty cool how he actually managed to overpower Gul'dan with the power of his Naru. I thought that was quite a cool little bit. Oh yeah, <laughs> just hide, just so suddenly surprise that because mm. he wasn't expecting it. Yeah, and then that of course led to the story of Heimel, which I thought was quite good. It was a bit. Rough. Like they yeah. could have done more. Well, done more with the ogres in general, I'd say. Yeah, they they could. There definitely should have been something more to do with, um, like maybe Gromash leading the war song again against the Gorian Empire. Because yeah. although he was at this point the war chief of the Iron Horde, he was of course the instigator of all the raids against. The Gorian Empire. Yeah. Which why... that was the original one. Mm. Yeah, I, th I think they could have quite easily done something where the Iron Horde had already made their offensive and then we came oh, in to like just came in as a cleanup squad. Yeah. But, yeah. but then there's a load of things that was changed like last minute, like going on the High Wall raid. In, I don't know if it was early base, but I'm pretty sure it made it to beta. The, you know, the first fight in there is Black, uh, not Black Ant, um, Kargath. Yeah. Uh, in one of the beta builds, you don't actually, you didn't actually kill him, he ran away at the end of the fight. So yeah. they evidently at some point had a plan to keep at least him going, which I would have been interested to see what that storyline plan was. Hmm. I mean, even if it had just been a case of when we got to Hellfire, you just fight bloody fell corrupted versions of all the guys, but hmm. that still would have been quite cool to see. Hmm. I, s I do think, though, that the way how they let Kargath die there, it definitely makes more sense for an orc, like, for, for Kargath to stay on the battlefield to the end, especially as a yeah. warlord. Yeah, I think the, sh the Shattered Hand were more on the lines of they wanted the glorious battle again, weren't they? they yeah. Or the glorious death. Not not to the level of like Warsong, but mm. they were they're probably in between. Yeah, they they were a clan. I mean, the main basis of their clan was vengeance against the Ogres, because of course the story of Kargath, which you see in the war was it lords of war trailers before yeah yeah, yeah the, the story of him was uh his captivity and how he actually became blade fist yeah by tearing his own arm off <laughs> yeah it's a pretty gruesome story but also pretty cool and at least there's like a really good explanation as to why he has such a hatred for the ogres yeah but yeah. On the more disappointing side of Dranor though, have have you well, I say have you, but um Gorgrond, if you remember that, the main yeah. quest line for that just I found that really dull when I went back and did it recently. Like oh, there it was um, Yeah, that's a bit primals. too disjointed, isn't it? Hmm. There was Barely any involvement of the Blackrock clan. No. You, like, 
you were working in the cell for like the entire time, then all of a sudden there's a quest scenario which takes you far north. Into... It takes you to the north. Yeah, you just go far north into Black Black Rock Foundry, and you've enslaved a primal to fight with you, and it's like that doesn't make sense. Um... <laughs> right. It's like yeah, where'd that come from? Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it would have been way better to see a lot more involvement of, um... So you don't actually Black Rock see, Clan. I don't think you see Black Hand at all until you go into the raid, excluding the introduction... I'll say scenario, but it's not. The introduction quest where you see all of them. Yeah. I don't remember um, you seeing Black Hand at all. Talador. The... Oh, yeah. He's on the ship, isn't he? Mm, f first chapter you do, and I think it's bad that they made it the first chapter. You go in and you're instantly fighting against Orgrim's little army. And fight fighting off a Black Rock clan in Talador. Not not in Gorgrons, where not they should have done in, it. Yeah. Should, it I was say, yeah he, you see him not in his zone where his raid is. Yeah. And so... I mean, and it's pretty much a cameo. It's not even really like he's there for the full thing, is it? Hmm. Like, don't get me wrong. That chapter was an amazing chapter. I loved it, but it was. It happened way too quickly. Like, we shouldn't have walked into Talador and be like, "Yo, Blackhand, like you're not allowed here." Slap. <laughs> Boom. Like, that that was too rushed. There should have been much more build up in Talador as to the involvement of the Black Rock clan. Yeah. And what was going on. But yeah, they they didn't unfortunately. Or he... no, I think Go on. I think they unfortunately realised quite early on that there were too many I don't know about mistakes, but people were finding flaws that they hadn't found in testers they'd almost abandoned a lot of stuff really early on yeah but you know what what i think they should have done is maybe have that introductory talador as the maybe the ending to gorgrons so have it something like so we have this little invasion that's may, maybe have that invasion we had on at the north to like maybe just the gates of the pit in around black rock foundry and then yeah. one of the commanders leaks that black hands was out in talador because you know idiot commander hmm. you know at Dying breath accidentally lets it slip. <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, it was just like salty that he died, so it was like, hmm. oh, Black Hand's over there! <laughs> but, um, yeah, and then maybe just gone from there, because at least then you would have felt like there was the build up. Yeah. But now, hmm. instead, you, you just say, Oh, hi, Black Hand. Bye, Black Hand. Yeah. And they're definitely should have been like a follow-on set of quests because like so after, after the ship after the iron star is fired off of our ship on so black hand ship before the ship completely blows you see him jump into the water and there should have been some form of follow-on because i mean his gear is fire I like, even even the image I've got on him on stream, you see the bit around his jaw area is made of fire. The black hand itself is like got some mini furnace inside of it, and his black hand is fire. And how how like none of it's damaged at all? I don't I don't get it. There should, there should there should have been something to do with black hands maybe some form of interception and then yeah, he gets at least an attempt yeah 
Because the, the thing on his armor, though, is if you think how much in terms of in-game time would have passed between him escaping, us taking down Heimel, and then we go into Blackwater Foundry, he would have easily repaired his armor by then. <laughs> yeah, true. But that... Well, I say repaired, he'd have easily lit it on fire again. <laughs> yeah. I mean... Let, let's be honest, I don't think his at his home there'd be too much of a problem to find a fire source, would there? <laughs> no. Hmm. Especially considering the third floor he drops you on is literally on fire. Yeah, it's just a massive ball of molten rock on top of a lava pit. But yeah. Which somehow doesn't hurt when you land on it though. Hmm. Yeah, an interesting one there, Blizzard. But, you know, I guess I guess we're just that magical that we, we ignore hot, hot floor. <clears throat> Unless you're a fire mage or a shaman, then no. <laughs> DK should have melted. Yeah. But, um... Yeah. There, there definitely should have been that quest to intercept Black and um, maybe he has his lucky escape with maybe Terran, Terran Gore's little campaign of uh, how he was trying to take all the power out of Orkandun. Maybe he would have been passing at the time, and then he... But then that wouldn't have played into his escape, because mm. Gordan, Terran Gore and that weren't part of Gromash's thing, and Black Hand was firmly Team Grom, weren't he? Yeah, but the what I'm trying to say is maybe like Terran Gore sees an opportunity to get at us, because if, if you remember, oh. in the scenario when we're actually fighting black hand we walk over Yurel, Marad, Draka and Duratan are fighting black hand oh and Orgrim I'd say you're missing Doomhammer there <laughs> yeah and he manages to kill Orgrim as as soon as we get there and he's still holding off um the other four when you get there so you're You've, you're, you're fighting Blackhand and he's still holding the five of you off and at the end of it he hasn't taken much damage he, he his health is still like well up there but yeah and it, it doesn't evidently doesn't get hit by the blast but mm. so that's, that's the only reason it, the fight stops is the cannon isn't it yeah because um the ship blew up um then that that's what causes the cinematic where he starts mugging off Dur <laughs> and then you find out that Marad is dead because he got that's another missed opportunity I think I understand he was only really meant to be there as our introduction into it but they could have mm. done a lot more of his character mm. but yeah like there, there was like, if, if you remember the Lords of War, the whole conversation between him and Varian where Marad wanted to get revenge against the Orcs or just make sure uh, Karabor didn't happen twice. It was Karabor, yeah. wasn't it? That became the Black uh, Temple. Yeah, tem yeah, Temple of Karabor. Yeah. Yeah, he, he just wanted to make sure that um, it didn't happen for a second time. No. Which... So he was the first to sign up and wanted to, mm. um, to from his personal cine, uh, Lords of War thing, he wanted to make up for like that one bit where he abandoned that group of survivors to take out that one orc, and then he went back and found those guys dead. Mm. I think he wa he wanted redemption for that, wasn't it? Yeah, but I'd... specifically anyway. I think because of that, he should have left. He um he should have led the charge against the Shadow Moon clan. In order to push out the Iron Horde, or at least get rid of the orcs from Shadow Moon Valley and protect Carabor. But, but then he kind yeah. of was initially. He was like the initial intro, or the helping introduction to those Draenei of Yerul and um, Velen and all that. Yeah. Because we had a Draenei with us, they were like, oh, hang on, these guys might be okay. 
Well, if you're an alliance, you're an alliance scum. <laughs> yeah, that that that's a key thing we need to get out here. This is the horde expansion, not an alliance expansion. <laughs> so, Dranai pipe down. <laughs> <laughs> Although they are pretty cool race, especially for um, especially for the alliance, you know. In, yeah, I'd say if you're, in terms of cosmetic looking like. The alliance is well at that point. They're all your kind of bog standard humanoid looking races, weren't they? Yeah. When they were first brought in, and then you got suddenly massive squid goat men things. <laughs> yeah, true. Hmm. Yeah, and then there was uh, also the uh, was it night elf they had originally alongside the humanoid or well, the regular different yeah. sized humans. Yeah, literally human, dwarf, gnome, night elf. Yeah. But, um... Yeah, they, they are pretty groovy addition to the Alliance. They were also the way that they brought shamans to the Alliance, were they? Hmm. Yeah. Um... Sp speaking of Shadow Moon, Nazul. He didn't really get much of he a story. He got shafted. Yeah, he's such an important character in Warcraft lore. I mean, he is the Lich King in our timeline. Mm. But yeah, all he really got was like... He, he got Shadow Moon storyline and then a dungeon boss. Mm, he, he just but... got the alpha... Alpha, alpha key to Shadowlands. Mm. Like... He, he could have had way more. His, his story his storyline should have been much more expansive. None of the warlords should have been a dungeon boss. Or if they mm. were, they needed a lot more questing storyline. Yeah. Not just a zone. Or at least have it so that there was some significant reason as to why they were weakened enough to become a dungeon boss. Especially some shadow caster such as Nazul. Like Yeah. But if if say the story for Shadow Moon Valley had been like he was the one leading the assault on Carabor, but at the end of that they lose and he gets badly injured and he legs it to hide mm. to try and recover but we hunt him down quicker. Then that I could kind of understand. Yeah. It. But now he literally causes Velen to sacrifice himself and then we find him in a dungeon. Mm. Um It's like they they should have they should have made it something like we fight him in the dungeon but he escapes and yeah. appears in a raid. Yeah, definitely. I'd have taken things like that as well, yeah. Mm. And he would have been perfect for Shatruff. Oh god, Just, yeah. Like his his main job really was to unleash the corrupted Naru. Mm. So him and Shatruff would have just made perfect sense. And then that also would have played in for potentially how Yiro could have got a power, because if she, assuming she would have played a part in that raid and taken him down, boom, there you go for a power spike. Hmm. But I think if Shatroff were to have happened, definitely after Blackrock Foundry, and have it so that he... Gr Gromash is all paranoid because, of course, he's lost um, his... He's lost his two, com two commanders and yeah. with Black Hand, his main weapon supply. Mm. Yeah, he, 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 that, that's literally his whole production of siege weapons gone. Uh, he's lost Kargath. He's lost Garrosh now. Although, apparently, he didn't somehow find out about how Garrosh was dead until, like, 8.2 when Gul'dan's like Here's Gorhal <laughs> I, I, I think news would have spread that Garrosh was dead especially he'd, since He'd made him the Warsong Crown leader as well as he yeah. as Grom was the war chief so you'd think you'd have heard oh um, you know your clan that you were in, part, in charge of that you gave to this random guy yeah that guy's dead <laughs> Yeah yeah, they... pretty sure that would have somehow made his way to him. <laughs> yeah, like 
so, some orc would have been like, mm, I might want to tell his that his son's dead. Nah, <laughs> let let um Green Dan tell him. Green Dan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, like the whole Shatra raid. If it happened after Blackrock Foundry, then of course um. Grom would have been paranoid that he'd lost major commanders and trying to be conservative and maybe Nurzul could have stepped up and be like I have a way we can completely crush everyone there's a Naru inside Shatruf it didn't work the first time Nurzul I'm gonna do it again I don't care what you say I want power and off he trots to Shatruf and of course um because it's already failed twice in that expansion yeah but um i guess the difference there though is the at least one that we see in like the quest line that's out in the open pretty much he has no backup whereas in shat draft which iron horde control even if it is locked down mm. there's probably a few more forces there to help keep us and then anyone else that comes in busy while he does whatever yeah mm. but also um the the other thing with that is like it could quite easily play into the Shadow Council's hands because of course Nurzul being still having I, I don't know did did he have his allegiance with the Iron Horde or the Shadow Council? He he was Iron Horde. Yeah, I thought so. Because um, um, in if I remember in the quest line for it for the Alliance, you see. Um, I don't know if it was Nizzle's wife or like ex-girlfriend. There was a female orc. I know that they knew Nizzle. Mm. And there's there's a bit of a tablet in a cave, and you see a mini in-game cutscene of him being approached by Grom, Garrosh, and someone else. I can't remember who the third person is. Yeah. And Grom's literally asking him, like, what the hell can your clan offer my horde? And that's when it all turns to the shadow magic and summons two uh, demons. Yeah. So, like, so it might have been out of fear, but he was definitely Iron Horde. Hmm. Yeah. So that yeah that 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 would play into the Shadow Council's hand. That if another warlord of the Iron Horde was defeated, then the Shadow Council would have a much easier time pushing into um, Tanan Jungle and claiming victory over Hellfire Citadel. Or... Yeah, in fact, that would have led Rakers. That would have meant they lost Gorgron's, uh, Gorgron's entrance into there, Blackhand, and they then lost um, Talador's entrance into there with Shatraft. So there's two entry points into uh, Tanan Jungle. Suddenly, mm. they're open. Yeah. But then... An an another... Speaking of Tanan Jungle now, Kilrog and the Bleeding Hollow. That's what another one that hell? was shafted. Yeah, that you see literally nothing of him apart from that cinematic with, as you said, um, Gul'dan, Grobs. Like, oh, here's your axe. Mm. It's like, ah, oh, now I'm gonna betray you now. Yeah, like Kilrog's only screen time was Grommo sh all screaming, Kilrog, Kilrog. <laughs> but yeah. There, there, there should have been a in-depth storyline with a bleeding hollow go, going into like, cause kill what Killrock was trying to do was bring his clan to victories against um, was it the Arakoa, the Lords of War, assaulting the bleeding hollow? I think no, that no, that was still the um, shattered hand, were not it? Cause there's a there's another quest, or maybe that was just part of the side, but there was a quest in there where you take over a spirit of one of the great Araka and you end up in a mini fight with um, Kargaf, don't you? Oh, so unless oh, it was, yeah. Unless it was a two-pronged attack, but hmm. the, I... the only warlord you see is Kargaf again. Hmm. But the, it, I thought in the Lords of War, it was the Tanan Arakoa. Because there, there was definitely Arakawa oh, settlement uh, there. Yeah, because you see that in like, the back corners, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Christ, what was it? 
No, yeah, I wonder if it was there. Uh, was it, I say two pronged, but had they almost defeated Grand Cross slash mate, converted the Arakoa that were in Tanan to their side, and then it was just Kargaf's lot were the ones leading in from that part they'd just taken over, maybe? I don't know. Hmm. Well, f from, from the Lord of War, I remember it being that with Kilrog's father, they'd all gone into hiding, like no one could leave their village because of the Ar Arakura attacks. You even see in the cinematic that Kilrog is scared as shit of the Arakura as they fly by. And then, I think in his vision, it was him leading the Bleeding Hollow to victory against the Arakura. So I think maybe there should have been at least something like maybe a quest line with the Horde where you go against the Arakoa and kind of liberate the Bleeding Hollow a bit more and help help them get their settlement back. And then maybe a little follow on quest line for the Alliance where the Bleeding Hollow get overly cocky and go for a little bit of a raid. Uh, mm. in the gates of Tanan jungle as the alliance try and push in or something like that I'm trying to remember his lords of war mm. did it, he actually have one Kilrog definitely did yeah it so it must have been the least memorable one then mm, it wasn't the best so what happened is he was like out collecting water an arako flies by he flinches he goes back to the village he goes and like some empty hall where his father is sitting all withered and weak and then his father's like it's time to see your fate give uh, give uh, yeah, him a I remember it now. yeah it was the, the more ritual based one yeah but i remember yeah so yeah that that it, 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 it gave you back. Yeah, that leads more into what we were just saying. It gave you backstory on him, but that was it. Backstory, no, mm. no real meat to him. If that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying. Through, but... There wasn't a proper storyline you could really follow with him, as like no. a player who only just played the game and not looked into Did, anything no outside one, of it. For anyone that has no interest in the law or is just only knows the law based on the game you'd pretty much be going who's this guy yeah like you see you see um Kilrog in the cinematic um you you're just like who is he oh this is the guy from the portal cinematic hmm. he didn't really do much he kind of failed to stop us why is this weapon <laughs> changed I, I, why is he now purple and spiky yeah. hmm and where did he get the second skull on his beard from? <clears throat> just, just like took it out of Gul'dan's pocket, popped it on quickly. That's as, as the scene changed. That, oh yeah, his necklace. Of that spike, yeah, the necklace or the spikes he has in his shoulders. Like now, oh, I yeah. want that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That that easily could have been a bit more. And then also. If, if you remember in Spies of Iraq, the main Arakura you side with, he ends up being a Hellfire Citadel raid boss. But there's oh, no... Iskar. Yeah, there's no story as to why Iskar is now your enemy. Like, you know his motives? There partially is, but it, again, it's a partial. Hmm. I mean... Because it's, like it's one of the mini quest lines, isn't it? Because you follow the other Arakura whose name escapes me. Yeah. To help you that zone. That rings a bell. It's something like that. Yeah. yeah he, like, he's trying to find Iskar. Yeah. And he, he, from, and he was like, oh, hang on. Why is this here? Why is his x way? And you just see a little cutscene, even if it's just a vision of like his transformation. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. It's literally like him. I can't remember if it's talking to Gul'dan or if. I assume it's Gul'dan. Whereas this oh, Gul'dan pretty much promises that he can get you your flight back. Mm. Which is a really dark thing. But it's like, yeah, you know, look, you can fly again. Now you must betray all your friends. Yeah, I remember that. That I, I remember that definitely being mentioned at some point. But I I uh I didn't really do the quest line for Spies of Iraq. I never really enjoyed it, if I'm honest. I don't know. 
wasn't it? it wasn't a great one but it Again, it was one like my first playthrough. I completed every single storyline that I could find. Yeah. No. What... I do not like a missing lore. <laughs> what, what did you think of uh, Spies of Iraq then? Um, it was another one similar to Gorgon, very disjointed with multiple bits that would suddenly pop up. Yeah. Like you had the stuff of the era. Initially, you're just helping the Arakoa you know, fight off the other Arakoa that are trying to kill them. Then you suddenly find the Zarakoa I, I want not say Blood's God, I know he wasn't, but mm. that's trying to come back. The so you God. have to resurrect another god to fight him or something. She was like, what? what yeah. Where's this come from? Hmm. Oh, that, that, that was in that misty bit. area, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Foggy bit. I remember that. Yeah. It was another disjointed area. Hmm. Then, uh... The only other zone we haven't really covered much of right now is... Nagrand. Which... Nagrand I always have a soft spot for because of the original Nagrand. Yeah. But... You know, I've... I thought... The whole storyline of, um... Setting up your outpost and getting ready to siege Gromasha and eventually leading to the Makgara. That bit was great, in my opinion. Yeah, I think as well, just almost accidentally, everyone that had been part of the previous expansion in Mist with Garrosh, everyone was looking forward to that zone. It's like, right, here we finally confront Garrosh. Yeah. And sort that bastard out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that was... Definitely a hype bit. Like e even now when I'm leveling, it's like I want to see the Garrosh bit. One thing I will say though, I do kind of wish, like if I would, if I'd been writing the law for it, I'd have. And well, this is where potentially something might come up in Shadowlands, but I kind of wish, from what we know at the moment, that we ha that Garrosh hadn't died, mm. but he maybe escaped or something made it all the way to Hellfire Citadel and then like in a cutscene redemption arc somehow he's the one that saves us even if it means he sacrifices himself like his dad yeah. for us to defeat in this case Archimonde. That's where I was expect, and I remember talking to my mates at the time I thought that's where it was going to go Like, and then instantly like, oh no have you not seen the Wellhead leaks for um, the end cinematic yeah he's dead oh hmm that's a missed opportunity. Yeah, they could have definitely done something like... May may maybe have Garrosh come out in one final act. Like, just before Ark... Because, like, Archimonde could have easily just one-tapped us. Just done a fell version of a Paladin's Wake of Ashes and blasted us to oblivion. So, like, how we just make him drop on his knees? No idea. But maybe Garrosh could have done, like appeared before Archimon kills us and like shoots an iron star at his back. Either that or, if or maybe Archimon's threatening to detonate something, whether it's himself or something else. Mm. Garrosh just offers to hold him off and distract him while the rest of us get through a portal or out or something. Mm. Basically does a Brock cigar. Yeah. That that would be that would have been a much better ending than what you got. Yeah, which is where I'm kind of hoping, because spoilers, if people haven't seen the equivalent of the Lords of War for Shadowlands, but oh, Garrosh is definitely in there. Yeah. That's the one. So I'm hoping there's something mm. there. Oh. That, that, that would be pretty good. I mean, you're you're a Garrosh fan anyway, so you're a bit biased oh, yeah. there. <laughs> like, and and anything to do with Garrosh, I'm all game for. I am all game for. Yeah. Also, Ashran. That was quite, like, if you think of it, Lorise. It was another one of the Gorian outposts, but just because it was so far off mainland Draenor, it didn't really have much of an assault point for the ogres. Yeah. And I, I don't think they really 
did too much with the story of that. I think they were just like there, there was no story. It was like here's your here's your main city, quote unquote, and your mm. PvP area. Yeah. It's like what? Why? Mm, it was a bit weird. I still think that was a stupid decision to make that the main hub and why they ever changed from um, the two episodes, so Carabor and I can't remember what the what was Blade Blades called Spire now. Citadel. It was Blade Spire, that didn't sound right to me for some reason. <laughs> why they changed from that, I will never know yeah. and never understand. But yeah, yeah, no, that I, I was just thinking in my head because I, d I didn't know that was the original hub. I wasn't. Uh, th those are the original plans, like uh, early in beta. Yeah. Late alpha, I can't remember. They changed it to Ashram. And I remember that everyone thinking, why? Hmm. But yeah, no. Ha having it as Blade Spires and Carabor, that would have been great. And then having Ashram as something like. We say a lot. Um into Ashran and hold her offensive from there. Yeah. Like, they could have had a whole additional phase for the whole thing of uh, building up our outpost, then charging in or something. Although, I, I don't think Ashran was good the way it is. Like, not for... Me not being a pvp -er, I can't really say there, but... Yeah, fair enough. I guess now... The... Only other thing of Draenor that still made it to the game, like ex excluding the stuff that there was meant to be other continents hmm. at so at some point, but they were just like yeah, there, we there were up. two that were cut. Yeah, I mean you can even see one of them on the map um, if you fully zoom out of Draenor in the bottom left-hand corner. You can see the edge bottom of the left. continent. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was the Ogre Empire, weren't it? Yeah. And then it yeah, was, that like... was meant to be an, and there was meant to be what in our version became Neverstorm. Mm. It was meant to be that landmass, which I can't remember what the original name they gave for it was, but that got cut as well. And that was meant to be an equivalent of the Timeless Isle. Mm. Never made it. Yeah, the, it, that was the top right one, wasn't it? Yeah. And that was meant to be all about like the main hub of the Evergrowth, I think, I remember hearing. Like, there was meant to be much more with the primals up that way. Okay. But... It just completely got cut. Yeah. Just quite a big shame. Hmm. With what yeah. we got massively, yeah. Hmm. Um, but yeah. So, aside from the cut stuff, the only other thing, really, there was is our return to Draenor in BFA. What what did you think of that quest line? Where we see old Gromash and uh, in the, in the Mega Unlock. Yeah. I personally like that. I kind of wish I could replay it, but yeah, same here. Because I, I kind of want to go back and I want to see what happens if you try and actually fight the Yerul. But mm. it intrigues me for what they have planned in the future because the fact that we've managed to go back there. I can very easily see them, like, maybe not directly after Shadowlands, but at some point, come out and suddenly that version of Yerul comes in and is attacking us with an army of the light mm. equivalent, or whatever the hell her forces were. Yeah. And have a complete flip. So we've, fight, we've fought the forces of death and shadow and things, and now suddenly we've got the light that for the longest time in game which just seems as this only good thing mm. now the last few expansions they've suddenly put a more gray area over it yeah you know I, I, I reckon if they did something like that though they'd be able to have to have a retribution arc of sylvanus but a hundred percent they'd still have to keep her an enemy like if she gets accepted back into the horde yeah but if she gets accepted back into the horde then I think Blizzard would have made a bad move there. Spe spe it, especially how she was like, what the hold is nothing! Yeah, that, that like bit, so unless they almost somehow boy retcon, not boycott, <laughs> retcon that, which would be a massive mistake, the fact it's the recent bloody one. Yeah. But, yeah, because they can't have a saying that, like, oh no, it's just a bluff to trick the jailer or some crap like that. That's about. 
Hmm. Yeah, because how, how would the jailer have even known? Hmm. But yeah, so... Back back onto that small topic um, of the Magha Unlock. There was also reference to Grumash having a Lightforged son in that storyline as well, which would oh, be yeah. interesting. Un un unofficial Lightforged Garrosh. Yeah. Which, yeah, that could be interesting if he's literally... In fact, I kind of have... If they do introduce him properly in game, that is literally like a complete opposite of Argaus, just for the laugh. So yeah. you've got Argaus just a vicious bugger, and this guy just wants to be friends. <laughs> yeah, he, he's, he's like Garrosh and doing. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a combo. <laughs> oh no, that would be so weird. But, yeah, I think that's just about all there is to Draenor. Without going into yeah, as you said, stuff that was cut. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that there is there is still like the the I, I think there was a little bit more with the frost wolves or something. I can't really remember. You know. Oh, you you know what they should have had though. Alternate Eatrig and uh, Varrock and all the Southangs actually. But. Missed opportunity on that one. I guess that they had included them with the story that they already had in there. They they could have only really made them Easter eggs. Yeah. But at least they would have been there and not just completely forgotten about. But yeah. Well, unless you've got anything else you want to add, Scott, I think that is the end of the podcast. Is there nothing off the top of my head? So yeah. I think so. Well, thanks everyone for tuning in to the very first World of Warcraft lore podcast. <laughs> that is me and Cal waffle for however long it is. <laughs> yeah, like forty-seven minutes now. So good, a good combo. Yeah, <laughs> thanks a bunch, uh, Scott, for joining me on this. I greatly appreciate you coming over. No worries. Cheers for having me. Yeah, it's uh, it's a pleasure. <laughs> but yeah. Thanks all for watching, uh, and I will see you in the next stream. Goodbye.